Welcome to GRE. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. What is perhaps the best way to get a high cash flow that's stable and predictable in real estate today? It is, rather than investing on the equity side, investing on the debt side by making a loan. We'll discuss these cash on cash returns of 6, 8, 10, and 12% while you get to hold real estate as collateral. I'm proud to introduce you to the place where I do my own private money lending on real estate today on Get Rich Education. The annual Spartan Summit is on. I was the kickoff speaker at the last event. This year, they are back in person, and the keynote speaker is none other than Shark Tank's Damon John. Learn from industry experts on real estate, tax strategy, lending, and entrepreneurship. You'll also get to tour tangible turnkey income property in growing Alabama markets. It's coming February 16th to 18th in Birmingham, Alabama. Get your ticket or learn more at SpartanInvest.com today. You can get a 50-year-old house somewhere or buy a new one directly from the builder with tenant resilient amenities already built in. With over 3,000 Florida units at different construction stages, they are exclusively for investors. President Wagner and Alaska and team also invest strongly in their own product. That's belief. Start at buildtorentdirect.com. That's build the number two rentdirect.com or text 407-927-5074. You're listening to the show that has created more financial freedom than nearly any show in the world. This is Get Rich Education. Welcome to GRE from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania to Hamburg, Germany and across 188 nations worldwide. I'm Keith Weinhold. This is Get Rich Education. There is profundity in the statement that money is an abundant resource and that time is not. Now, just think about this. Consider if you were an active house flipper, something that does take your time. First, before you would go out to buy distressed property, you would need to come up with the money to purchase it somehow. And then let's say you find two distressed single-family homes, and these two properties really need work. Well, because they're in pretty shabby condition, a bank is not going to give you a loan on those. You would need to come up with the money yourself, or rather than using a bank that won't give you a loan on shabby properties, you would have to get a loan from a private investor in order to tackle these two flips. Call it a blue house and a yellow house. Then, before you decide to buy, say, these two distressed single-family homes, you try to calculate how much money you would have to put into the rehabs and the after-repair value, the ARV, on both of them. Well, let's say that you figure that out as best you can, and you do buy both of the distressed houses, and everything goes as planned on the blue house, But in the yellow house, well, let's say you find there's a bunch of rotted wood in the house, especially around the windows, and the windows on two sides of the yellow house need to be replaced. And before you know it, the surprising wood rot on the yellow house wiped out the profit on both your blue house and your yellow house. And even if you broke even overall, well, you've got no profit by the time that you paid back your lender, but you've lost a lot of time. Well, that is a risk to the small time flipper, and you've lost time and effort that you're never going to get back. But companies that do this at scale, a big scale, like turnkey companies, well, they might buy dozens of distressed homes every month to fix those up. And not only do they have economies of scale because they're dealing with bigger numbers, they can have professional teams run the ARVs. So that one unpleasant surprise in a property it's not going to make the entire endeavor unprofitable. So one dog of a property out of, say, 24 of them per month, well, that can therefore be digested. Now, what we're talking about today is not you being a property flipper, but how you can be the lender to a large-scale property renovation company that does a lot of deals each month. And in real estate, what is even more passive then turnkey investing with a property manager is private money lending. 
Banks, since they don't often lend on a distressed property, these rehabbers obtain a loan from a private lender, and that person can be you. So they are the ones that can buy the rehab property and fix it up and sell it for more and then cash out their lender at the end, which is you, and it generates 6 to 12% returns, and the rehabber is the one that smooths all the bumps in the road because they do have that volume for this. They're buying more properties than an individual often can, and it is an easy on-ramp and a real hands-off investment for you that really tilts toward cash flow. Now, we all know here, the equity side is awesome. Real estate pays five ways. But say that you can't get a loan for another property yourself yet because you can't meet the debt-to-income ratio threshold from your mortgage loan underwriter or some other reason. Well, then this could be for you as well. Private money lending. So yes, today we're talking to the source, the woman and firm through which I have chosen to do my own private lending on real estate for a predictable cash return. And for your benefit here, I'm going to talk to her just like I'm vetting her for the first time. I will ask the questions that you should ask when you're making a loan to someone else. Flat out, what's your track record? Have you ever lost an investor's money? And you know, another really important question to ask, and I will ask it is, where are you creating arbitrage? Because your borrower better be making a spread somewhere. So we're talking about private real estate lending today. You are listening to Get Rich Education, episode 371. Coming up in future weeks, a lot of your favorite guests, including the return of the most recurrent guest in GRE history. You know who that is. Yeah, Rich That Tax Advisor Tom Wright will be back yet again, not one more time, but two more times as we approach year end. And Tom has that great way of taking a completely boring topic like taxes, sorry about that, Tom, and taking that boring topic of taxes and making it so exciting that somehow it just feels like it became the center of the world. That's coming up today. Let's talk about stable high yield cash on cash returns by investing on real estate's debt side. I'd like to welcome back onto the show the co-founder, chair, and chief investment officer of the firm where I personally choose to invest my own real estate private lending dollars. That is it, the Freedom Real Estate Group family of companies based in Ohio. Welcome back to GRE, Danny Lynn Robeson. Thank you so much, Keith. I love being on your podcast. I love the opportunity. I appreciate it. We love having you. You know, I was just talking with Andrea yesterday that you are just one of the more passionate and robust entrepreneurs that we really deal with here at GRE. And this is now your third time on the show with me talking about private lending. And really, Danny, I think it's vital to have you on now because in a higher inflation environment, even validated by the government's own CPI in recent months, individual investors need to get a solid real yield on their money more than ever. So tell us more about why you think this has been such a popular popular topic for investors ever since we had you on the show to talk about this the first time. I just love private money lending because it's an easy entry point for investors. A lot of investors, they want to be investors or want to be investors. They're listening to shows like yours because they want to learn more about it and see which avenue. Even when I started back in 2008, I was like, well, gosh, there's so many avenues to invest. Which one do I choose first? And if I would have known about private lending back then, I probably would have started there because of the ease of entry point the minimal amount of capital that I need, $50,000 to be able to get started, the fact that I don't have to be accredited. I think the hardest thing when people are coming into a private lending space is the team because the team matters. And I think you and I recently talked about a Facebook post that I made because I saw somebody that hurt somebody else and didn't pay them back, make a big post on Facebook about invest with me on this deal. And I was just like, you know, hello, let me help educate you guys on what you should be doing in your due diligence whenever you start a private lending relationship. And I will tell you that that's one of the first things that people ask on the call. And so why I brought it up right now is, hey, how long have you been doing this? You know, what's your experience? How many deals have you done? But the fact that they're new and this is an easy entry point, they don't have to be accredited. It's that $50,000 minimum. Their returns are somewhere between 6 and 12%. It's secured by real estate. They have the liquidity that they sometimes want to test and trust a relationship. All of those reasons are why I think every time you and I talk, we just get flooded with calls. <laughs> 
That's right. And for good reason. And now those returns of 6 to 12%, what is the liquidity like there? If one wants to get return of principal, like get their money invested back, how long does that take? That's a great question. So uh, we do payments of the interest at the very end. So when the property sells, you're going to not only get your principal back, you're all going to get all of your interest. Plus, you're going to get a $25 wire fee reimbursement because your bank is going to charge you $25 to wire it to the title company. And our goal is for you to get the best return possible, not have incur fees because you had to wire the money to the title company for closing. To speak to the term, it's 12 months on average. And we found that's a really good sweet spot because if we buy a property that's a large rehab or if we buy a property that's occupied, it's going to take longer than normal to do to complete the rehab and then sell the property. But if we purchase a property that's vacant and it's a single family, it's on average four months. So it's very, very quick. So we give ourselves some safety by making it a 12 month term automatically. And then we tell everybody, hey, Keith, you're going to be investing in a single family. It happens to be vacant. We're probably going to be in and out of this in four to five months. Is that okay? Or would you like a larger project that you okay. think is going to take longer? We talk about, I think with this sort of investment, it's really important to have that trusted team with years of history, something that you have there. In a sense, for a new investor, that's perhaps the most important part. It is 100% the most important part. We personally buy properties where investors started the rehab and ran out of money. And now we're picking up the pieces. And what did that mean for them? What did that mean for their investors, any private money lenders? So there's just situations like that that we encounter all the time because real estate, everybody wants to be in it and everybody wants to be an investor. But if you haven't been in it long enough, you don't understand the inevitable things that are going to come up and you're going to think it's a $20,000 rehab. It's going to turn into a $30,000 rehab. That doesn't happen all the time, which is why we like to do volume because we mitigate. We're going to have some duds <laughs> and we're going to miss it and pull open a wall and have a mistake. But if we're doing 10 a month, well, surely that's going to happen maybe two out of 10. So we're kind of mitigating our risks there. And that's another conversation we have on the phone all the time about why we have set up our business the way we have. That's right. You think about if an individual investor tried to do their own flip, the amount of variability and downside risk there where they don't have a whole bunch of properties to help stabilize that return, let alone their time. And the fact that this is a hands-off investment is giant. I know that you have a really great story of how 50K invested, which is the minimum investment amount to invest in a private lending deal, rolled into a substantially greater amount of money for investor. Tell us about that. I love this story. And I think we've mentioned it before because many times I'll jump on the phone with somebody and talk to them and explain the private lending experience, walk through the entire process and they get comfortable. And they're like, you know, I would really like to try this out. I also talk to them that this is a trust-based relationship. It's so important to know the team and the person that you're working with. I said, so it's okay to start small, do a deal with us, see how it goes and then invest more. We actually had somebody that said, hey, I'm going to come down and visit you. He came to us. We sat in the conference room. We talked through everything. And he said, I really like you guys. And from 50,000 from the very first phone call that day turned into 100,000 when he sat down, $200,000 when he left. And right now he has $1.4 million with us. Plus he just invested another $350,000 in syndications with us. So it's all about that relationship and that trust and building it up. Yeah, that is very telling with what happened there. So tell us more about that process. I know that you and CJ in investor relations there help to discuss goals with investors that are potentially interested in private lending. Tell us about the process. So I think the first and most important part of that is asking what your goals are, because everybody has a different goal. In fact, the investor that turned his money into the 1.4 million, his goal was to put his money somewhere where he never had to touch it. Although he loved private lending, he said, I don't want to, you know, look at the deal and sign the payoff statement. And like, that was just too much work for him. He's a doctor. He's very, very busy. And so the goals piece is just our ability to say, okay, this is what we can do for you specifically. So we find out where's your money coming from? As an example, is it coming from a, a self-directed IRA or a solo 401k? Or is this cash? That comes into question, not necessarily for private lending. It does because Tiffany will help everybody with custodial forms and stuff like that when they're brand new. But it also comes into play if it's an investment where they want tax benefits. If you're already in a tax sheltered account, you won't get tax benefits on a particular investment. That's a totally different conversation, but that's why we ask all those questions on our first call. What is your goal? What do you want to achieve? And then we can help you. Typically, everybody comes in our door as a private lender. 
That's where they want to try first. It's very easy. They, again, there's not a lot of hurdles to overcome. They're new to investing. So they just want to see what they can do. Then they do that. And then they go, so remind me again, what other things, and let's talk about those goals again. We'll revisit them and we'll explore all the different avenues. So I think the most important part is just getting on the phone so that we can have that conversation and help them best way possible. Tell us more about this sort of a green light that you give for uh, presenting deals and, and just sort of how that flow works when one understands that they want to invest their capital with a hands-off private lending deal where they can generate 6 to 12% cash on cash returns per year. Just more about how their money is secured by a property and the note and the mortgage creation and all of that. Can you walk us through some more of that, Danny? The process is very, very simple, even though the doctor wanted it easier. <laughs> I will say it's still simple. So after the conversation, let's just say you, Keith, I would like to invest in this single family property. And then I would introduce you to Tiffany and say, hi, Tiffany, Keith is uh, one of our new lenders. He's interested in investing. Here's how much he has. And she's going to send you a property, an example a sheet that gives you the name of the property, the financials, the address, the unit mix, everything that you would want to know. You're going to take it up, look at it, ask any questions. And then once you're done, that's where the green light comes in. You go, Tiffany, I'm ready. I'm done asking questions. I'm ready to go. I want to invest in this deal. Once that green light is given, then the process starts and it's super simple. So, so far, that's all you've had to do, right? Look at a packet and say, yes, Tiffany, I want to do it. She's going to introduce you to the title company. The attorney at the title company is going to create a note and mortgage. Tiffany's going to review it first. She knows what to catch and what are the mistakes are going to be. So she reviews it and she sends it to you and says, hey, Keith, I've already reviewed this. Can you just double check it in case I missed anything? And you're going to go, nope, it looks fine. And then we go through the closing process. You don't have to do anything else. We're going to let you know when it closes and say, Keith, it, it just closed every single month around the 20th of the month. We're going to give you an update. Now, some of our investors love weekly updates and pictures. They just want to follow along the process. And so Tiffany's happy to do that. Some of our investors go, please don't bother me. <laughs> I want this money working for me, but I don't need to hear from you every single month. It's based on your personality and what you'd like. But once we get ready to sell the deal, she says, hey, Keith, we're getting ready to sell this deal. It's going to be closing in two weeks. Here's your payoff statement. She prepares it for you. You just double check the numbers and then you sign it. That payoff statement goes to the title company. And when we close, you're going to get your principal investment plus the interest, plus that $25 wire fee reimbursement sent to you. And the title company is going to send you a mortgage a release of mortgage. That's important because remember the note and mortgage that the attorney created, that was your security. It's backed by the real estate itself. So if anything did happen, you're the bank, you're Bank of America, Wells Fargo, whatever it is, you're the bank and you can take the property back if I defaulted or anything else happened. Well, at the end, when you got all your money back, title company is going to go, you got your money as promised. Now sign this release because we need to take those liens off of the property. And I do want to ask you more about that before we're done, just so that you can reiterate your track record and if you ever have lost money on a deal and more. But before we talk about that, understand that I think you know this, Danny, I am one of those hands-off investors. I don't need to hear back every month or whatever. <laughs> Not that I don't want to hear from you. I don't need nearly as many touch points as some other people do. But I think for one to get a better understanding of effectively an investor should ask, well, where's the arbitrage or where's the value really being created here in this 6 to 12% cash on cash return? A lot of people wonder then, well, how are you using our funds? Now, of course, in the Freedom Real Estate Group there, you also have a turnkey division. So one use of the funds might be that you buy a distressed asset at, for 50K, put 20K of work into it. Now you're 70K into it and you can turn it over and sell it for 100K. Is that a pretty common use of investor funds? And there's some other ones. So tell us about how our money is actually being used and how you're creating value from that in order to give us these returns. That's a great question and one I don't think we've covered on podcast before. So I'm really glad that you asked it. 80% of what we do is turnkey. That is our main real estate investment because we buy ourselves, we hold ourselves. We want to help other people do the same is to have rental property. And so typically we're going to take your funds as a private money lender, find a property, we're going to rehab it and we're going to sell it to another turnkey investor who wants that rental cash flow. The second way that we do it, which isn't near as much, is retail flips. A retail flip is going to be something where it's not going to give you the cash flow. It doesn't even qualify as a good cash flowing property. It's maybe a $350,000 house that if we rented it, maybe got you $2,400. So that's not 1% that we all like to see in our turnkey properties. A minimum, we try to be at like, let's just say you're going to buy a $100,000 property. We want that rent to be at a thousand or 1100, a little bit more than that 1% purchase to rent ratio. 
So when we don't find that ratio, it turns into a retail flip. We're still going to buy it. There's money to be made there, but we're going to sell it to an owner occupant and put it on the MLS. The third way that we uh, use private money funds, and I just did this last year for the very first time and gave my lenders who have been with me for years a 12% rate of return because I said, you're going to come on this adventure with me. And so we bought a 56 unit apartment complex and we put one lender per building. There are four buildings. So one lender per building. They always had first lien position and they did the purchase and the rehab. We are just now starting the refinance process. So they will be into that deal. It was a total of 1.3 million between all four buildings for the purchase, a little over 800,000 for the rehab, and they funded the entire thing. They're going to, they're all getting 12% return for 15 months where they just got to sit and, and look at pictures whenever they wanted to see pictures of the progress. So those are the three ways that we use private money funds and do deals together. Any prospective investor, no matter what they're investing in, whether it's cryptocurrency or a stock or private lending or a turnkey property, they should always ask that question. How is the value actually being created? We just learned. If you want to know more about freedom capital investments, Danny and CJ put together a great report for you at getricheducation.com slash lending, where you can learn more about how this works. But I've got a lot more questions for Danny, including did you ever lose money and have investors ever lost money and more about their track record? You're listening to Get Rich Education. Our guest is Freedom Real Estate Group's Danny Robeson. When we come back, I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. You know, a lot of investors choose either cash flow or home price appreciation, but one real estate market could provide both, Jacksonville, Florida. They've got 27% lower home prices and higher rents than the national median. Their market has appreciated 34% more than other comparable cash flow markets over the last 30 years. Get positive cash flow today and above average appreciation for tomorrow. They often have available inventory in Jacksonville, if you can believe that. Start at cashflowandgrowth.com. The people that our listeners can't stop talking about are Ridge Lending Group and MLS 42056. They provided GRE listeners with more loans than anyone, and it's where I got my last few loans. They finance single family income property up to four plexes. They're the number one lender for beginners and veterans. Start your pre qualification, chat with President Chaley Ridge personally, and get your custom plan for expanding your cash flowing portfolio. Start at RidgeLendingGroup.com. Hey, is your IRA in a real estate syndication? Yikes, a 37% UBIT tax could hit you, but you still have a chance to set up your EQRP and avoid this. Did you make too much money in 2020 and need more deductions? Now federal law lets you set up an EQRP in 2021 and get deductions for last year. Yeah, retroactively. Even put old IRA and 401k money in Bitcoin, gold, or your own business. Get control of all of your retirement money, tax and penalty free. Text EQRP in all capital letters to 72000. This is Rich Dad Advisor, Garrett Sutton. To grow your wealth, listen to the always valuable Get Rich Education. Welcome back to Get Rich Education. We're talking with Danny Lynn Robeson of Freedom Capital Investments. They're based in Ohio. It's where I choose to use my own private money lending dollars here, where you get consistent, stable 6 to 12% cash on cash returns per year. We're talking about investing on the debt side rather than the equity side that most people are familiar with. And really, that included me. I think it's easier to wrap one's head around the equity side in you investing in a property rather than the debt side here, where you basically have the property as collateral. Is that how you think of it, Danny? Yes, exactly right. You nailed it. Some wonder, well, before I even get into this still, though, I would just wonder about your track record and tell us, have you ever defaulted on a loan? Because people really want to know about the risks and their downsides. So tell us more about that. Yeah, I love that question because I tell people, go do your due diligence as you should on anybody that you work with, because the team is the most important part of this trust transaction, in my opinion. Even though you have the property as collateral, as you mentioned, you have a note and mortgage, you are the bank, you still don't want to foreclose on anybody, right? You just want to have a good relationship, earn some money on your greens that are deployed into an investment and get it back with more money. And so I think that's just really one of those important things that we always have to consider. 
the long answer that I just did was no, I have not defaulted at all. And I tell people, call the title company that we do all of our deals to them. Ask them if I've ever defaulted on a loan. I have lost money on a project. Anybody that's in real estate, if you don't think you're going to lose money, you're kidding yourself because right. there are going to be projects where you lose money. But I always protect what I feel is the most important relationship. And the reason why I've gotten this far is because of those trusted private money lenders who said, I believe in you, Danny. I trust you with my money. Here you go. Let's go do more deals. If I lose money, they never lose money. So an example is a duplex where we lost, I want to say it was around 40, but close to $50,000. And our lender got all of their principal back, all of their interest, plus their wire fee uh, reimbursement. They didn't even know we lost money because they didn't need to know, right? They just needed <laughs> to know that we honored our word right. and we gave them exactly what was owed. And that's why I like doing volume. I love doing, like we just said, 10 deals a month is our always our goal because we are going to lose money sometimes. And we need to understand that as a business owner and make sure we're protecting the people who are trusting us and putting their money to good use. When you're a family of real estate companies and you do hundreds of deals annually, yes, of course, you're going to lose money on deals. But at last check, you have always paid your lenders back 100% yes. of what was owed plus interest is agreed. Yes, 100%. And I say it that way because some investors have paid back their lender, but didn't pay them the interest. They gave them the principal back, but didn't pay their interest back, or they negotiated a lower interest because the deal went bad. I've never even done that. And I always just like to like, have faith in me, vet me, you know, call my title of company. You can you know, check me in every which way possible because I think that is such an important piece. Just I always want to hit across the finish line every single time. Yeah, we're talking about getting return on both return of principal and return on principal, both of those things. It is a rather team-centric investment when you go on the debt side here, even more so than the equity side. A lesson from the equity side is we know that markets in properties still matter substantially. So tell us about those markets geographically and then what property types you're looking at and how varied those are, Danny. We love Dayton. We moved to Dayton from, wait, we would have lived in Texas. Then we went to Arizona, moved to Dayton. People who live in Texas and Arizona, they don't move to Dayton, Ohio, but we love cash flow. And the Midwest, it's cash flow country. You know, we can buy houses out here for $75,000 and get $900 in rent. You just can't do that in other places of the country. The greatest part about that as well, though, is we call this state boring or the Midwest in general is boring. And we like it being boring because we don't have those big swings. So even as the market will change and shift, we know that we're not going to have the big swings that another state might have like California or everybody knows the big swing states. So I won't go too far into it, but we feel pretty safe out here. And also with cash flow, we're not speculative, right? We're just counting on the cash flow. So we buy B and C properties that have that good, strong cash flow. We stay away from A because it's less and we happen to be passive income cash flow focused. So we don't necessarily buy the A properties and we definitely stay away from the D properties. The only time we've gone into areas that are close to that is the gentrification. It's we see it progressing and we're trying to buy blocks. We literally bought three houses right next to each other, but it was a C neighborhood, but that's when we would go in so we can start improving the areas because we're watching Dayton just do some amazing things. Dayton and southwestern Ohio is pretty well insulated from what I call that coastal volatility in those markets out there that have substantial price wings. And yes, this is part of one's life. It should indeed be pretty boring. And I sort of think of that portion of Ohio as really being one of the few places where one can still get full 1% rent to purchase price ratios at times. You do, however, invest outside of Ohio with private lending funds, right? Yes, we do in our apartments. So in our apartments, we are in uh, six different states. We are in Tennessee, Indiana, Kentucky, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Ohio. All right. A lot of those cash flowing places. How selective yes. are you as to residential versus commercial? It depends on the goal. A lot of the multifamily purchases, we are purchasing ourselves as hold. Because right now, the base of investors that we have, they love single family. And the people that like the multifamily, they like two to five, eight, 10, but they're not in the larger part. So for the property that we want to buy ourselves and hold as a company or even personally, they're usually larger multifamily because we are fans of economies of scale. And even when our contractors go there, they love it because they buy in bulk and they pretty much move into one of the vacant units and then rehab the complex as they go. So that's kind of the split that we have between what we do and our investors do. So by commercial, you're talking about residential apartments and not retail type of investing and not commercial in that sense. Correct. Yes. 
all properties that are cash flowing, because that's our main goal, the retail flips, as you mentioned, that is, we came across a deal. It doesn't fit the buy and hold model for us or our investors. And so we go ahead and retail flip it to an owner occupied buyer. Okay. With what happened in the world beginning about two years ago, some people feel more comfortable with residential than other types. And actually, is that typically what you find with your private lending investors there, Danny, that people prefer residential security? They sure do. Yes. Single family specifically. Yeah. That's also like something here in the Midwest, just about there's not as many multifamily and good comps. It's harder to comp out those properties, which makes people a little bit more nervous. You want to be a savvy investor if you're going to be going after the larger multifamily or any type of multifamily because of that issue. When we first started doing private lending, that conversation came up. They said, oh, what about the comps? And we're like, okay, so we explained multifamily and the issues of not having a whole lot of comps, where a single family, they're everywhere. And you can get them with the appraiser standards of within six months of a property being sold, within a mile radius, not crossing any highways, same bed bath count, where it's more difficult to do that with multifamily. Market, collateral type, and team are all really key for a private money lender here. And you do have an awful lot of references about your track record. In fact, you, the listener, can get a hold of those references on the report that you can get there at getricheducation.com slash lending. There are a number of reviews and references over there. Danny, oftentimes investors, once they start private lending, they just want to keep their money going and they want to keep rolling it ahead. Can an investor do that continuously? Or is there any sort of downtime between projects and therefore gaps where an investor's money is not working for them? Tell us about that. This is something that I've learned in the evolution of business, right? So when you and I first started our podcast and, and relationship, yeah. we were only doing private lending, right? And so every single time that we cashed out somebody on a deal, we'd say, here's your payoff statement. And we'd say, at the same time, we've got another property coming in up. Would you like to reinvest your money into the next property? They would answer, I would say 99% of the time, yes. We would send that new property. And sometimes closing would be two weeks apart. Sometimes it's two days apart. Sometimes it's 30 days apart. So they would have this downtime where the money was back in their hands, not earning interest. Over the course of time, I had lenders saying, Danny, can I give you my money and you just use it? Just use it on whatever you want. It doesn't, I've done a couple deals with you. I know you, I like you, I trust you. There's been like three out of, I don't know, 60 lenders that have actually come to our office. And so I got that question so many times, I started talking to attorneys and I was like, how do I do this? How do I do it legally? I don't want to pool funds and, and make this an SEC regulated type deal. Essentially, we came up with a master note. An attorney drafted a master note that allowed us to say, Keith, would you like to invest for three years? Yes. Oh no, five years. The master note gets adjusted and their money is secured in its own private bank account. They can check on any time what deals it's invested in. We still have note mortgages involved. And we've even to the extent now created a fund in which we can pool. It is SEC regulated. So there's different rules, but it's allowing our investors to talk to us. We get to hear their feedback and their desires of what they want. And we are continually meeting those needs. And I've just loved that growth. That is a great way to reduce downtime between projects. Some often wonder then, how long would it take me to get started? If I want to place funds this week, Like, how long does it actually take me to get into a private money lending deal? It all depends on our pipeline. That's a caution answer. <laughs> but I would say right now we have so much in the pipeline. Tiffany would just fall in love after this podcast you know, comes out and we get bombarded with calls like we always do. But to answer your question more specifically, you jump on the phone with CJ or I. We discuss the goals that we talked about earlier in the podcast. If we want to start with a private money lending experience, we introduce you to Tiffany and Tiffany immediately checks our pipeline and says, here's the deals that I have available that qualify for the amount that you'd like to start with. And here's when they're closing. So depending on those closing timelines, we have our own funds that are sitting here, right? That we can use on these deals. But if a private lender wants to come in, we'll allow them to jump on a deal we were going to close on with our funds, with their funds, that allows us to keep that, our money for the next deal. So we always have that counterbalance to be able to put private lenders into deals as quick as possible. We're talking with Danny Lynn Robeson of Freedom Capital Investments. 
she and her investor relations coordinator, CJ, help people kind of wrap their heads around the investment and get started. And then Tiffany over there at Freedom Capital Investments helps with the paperwork and helps everything settle. If you want to learn more about stable cash on cash returns, you can do that at getricheducation.com slash lending. Danny Lynn has been helping our followers for quite a while now. Danny Lynn, are there any last things that you'd like to say about private money lending? I would only say, don't be afraid to start because everybody has questions about how to do things. And there is no obligation to get on the phone with CJRI and we can talk to you about your goals and you have, you don't have to invest right away. Actually, we had a lender um, that said, I talked to you after your first podcast with Keith <laughs> and now I'm ready. It just took me some time to move some money into these investments so that I could be able to do an opportunity with you. So having that first conversation just opens up the door for a future opportunity if you so choose. Yeah, well, if you want to learn more, again, you can do that at getricheducation.com slash lending. And if nothing else, just get an education on how private money lending for real estate really works with a good operator. Danny Lynn, it's been great having you back on the show. Thank you so much, Keith. I really enjoy it. Yeah, great stuff from Danny Lynn. As always, you've got to appreciate that they focus on residential property, not office, not retail shopping, and also on those parts of the nation that tend to have stable prices, not those ones I described as the volatile markets. Imagine, for example, investing in a volatile market like Miami or an asset whose demand had the bottom fall out from under it like office space did. Well, when you're making a loan on real estate during that loan period, the property is your collateral. So residential property in the Midwest and South, it has those history of stable, boring, plodding prices. And you can then say that even your collateral is well underwritten. And to know that that value of your collateral is firm, that does make a lot of sense about how, although they do some apartments, Danny Lane focuses on single family homes because there are just simply more of them and therefore more sales and more comparable property values so that your collateral does have that solid valuation. Oh, and just to be perfectly clear, Freedom Real Estate Group is a group of companies based near Dayton, Ohio. One of those six companies under Freedom Real Estate Group is a turnkey real estate provider. And the one we're talking about today is Freedom Capital Investments, which handles the lending side, like we're talking about here. You will find a few different options. So it's not just about how much you lend in order to get these returns. There is an option for higher returns and lower liquidity, meaning that your dollars are loaned for a few years, but you achieve those higher returns. And then there's also an option for you to get lower returns and higher liquidity, meaning perhaps a six to eight month turnaround. That's that better liquidity. And some private lending programs out there have $100,000 minimums, or you need to be accredited. There is no need to be accredited here, and it is just a $50,000 minimum. So get the report to learn more. And then, yeah, to be comfortable, you may very well want to have a 30 minute call there before getting started, if in fact any of this sounds interesting to you. And hey, it really was interesting to have some dialogue with whom I do my own real estate lending through. It is about as passive as passive income gets in the property investing world. You can get started at getricheducation.com slash lending. Until next week, I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. Though you might quit your day job, don't quit your daydream. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Get Rich Education, LLC, exclusively. The preceding program was brought to you by your home for wealth building, GetRichEducation.com.